Good day out there, YouTube community. This is Professor Friday from Macomb Community College coming at you one more time. I've had a request from one of my students to do a problem similar to number three that's found in the section 1.1 web assign homework. So when I opened it up, the problem that was given to me was that a bicyclist was biking along a curve that's modeled by the function f of x is equal to 0 0.03 times the quantity 8x minus x squared, where f of x represents elevation in miles and x represents a horizontal distance in miles. At what rate does the elevation change at x equals 3? It also provided us a little picture over here that showed what a hill looks like. Now, the function may change from uh, problem to problem, and uh, f of x does represent elevation in miles, so what we're looking for is a rate of change. Now, the first question posed to us is, can this be done using only pre-calculus? Calculus, sorry, spelling isn't one of my strong suits. Can this problem be done using only pre-calculus? Now, for that, I'll switch over to red here, we're looking for a rate of change of elevation when x is equal to 3. Now, the rate of change in question here, because we're only given one point, has got to be an instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rates of change only give us a single point with which to work. However, in pre-calculus, in order to find a rate of change or a slope of a line, we need to have two points. Therefore, no, this problem cannot be done. No, we have only one point. We have only one point, so this problem cannot be done using pre-calculus. However, in the second part of the question, we are asked to estimate this rate of change. This can be done using pre-calculus. Estimate this rate of change. So according to the notes from section 1.1, this is what we refer to as a tangent line problem. Since we're looking for the slope of a tangent line, we only have a single point. So what was given to us in the problem is the following. We can estimate a rate of change rate of change at x equals a can be estimated by m is approximately equal to f of a plus a little tiny change in x minus f of a all over the change in x, which is a plus delta a minus a. And this, of course, simplifies if we simplify the denominator. f of a plus delta x minus f of a all over delta x. And ironically, I'm going to write this really big. Delta x must be small. I hope the irony is not lost on you. When we say small, in this case, what we mean is that delta x must be really close to zero. Now, to approximate a tangent line, what we're saying is that if we pick the first point at the given point of x, and we pick our second point really, really, really close to the first point, we should be in good shape. So what I'd like to do is find this expression for the function and the value of a that was given to us. So with that in mind, we're out of room on this side of the paper, so I'm going to flip her over. In addition, I'm going to recopy down some of the relevant information. f of x is equal to 0 0.03 times 8x minus x squared. And we were given the value a equals 3. So we're going to match this to the function that was given to us. The rate of change is going to be approximately equal to f of 3 plus delta x minus f of 3 all over delta x, with the promise that delta x has to be a really small value. So this would be equal to, if we start plugging things into the definition of the function, this is 0 0.03 times 8 
times our value of x, 3 plus delta x, minus x, which is 3 plus delta x, quantity squared. And that is all f of 3 plus delta x. Then we're going to subtract f of x, which is 0 0.03 times 8 times x, which is 3, minus x squared, which is 3 squared. That is a big old numerator. That's all over delta x. Now since we're only estimating this numerically, what you could do is grab your trusty graphing calculator and start plugging in values to this wonderful looking expression. However, my graphing calculator is in the office and today's MLK day, which means I can't get in my office. What am I supposed to do? Well, the answer comes in the form of a question. you got to ask yourself, who's got two thumbs and loves doing algebra? The answer is this guy. So, let's do a whole lot of algebra. First algebra I'm going to do. This big term has a 0 0.03. This big term has a 0 0.03. I'm going to factor that out. 0 0.03 times. I'm going to do a lot more algebra. I'm going to distribute the 8 from the previous step. 8 times 3 gives me 24 plus 8 times delta x minus, we'll keep the parentheses here because we're going to have a little foil action going on. That'll be 9 plus 6 times delta x plus delta x quantity squared. This is all minus. We factored out the point zero 0.03 over here so we can simplify 8 times 3 for 24 minus 3 squared, which is 9. Extend that guy a little further. This is all still over delta x. Now obviously we can't plug in delta x equals 0. That wouldn't be allowed. We'd wind up with a 0 in the denominator. So let's keep simplifying to see what happens. Up here we got a 24 plus 8 times delta x. We'll distribute this minus sign. Minus 9 minus 6 times delta x minus delta x quantity squared. Inside the second set of parentheses over here we have a 24 minus 9. We'll call that minus 15. This is all still over delta x. Now, nice things are about to happen. Let's take a look at all the constant terms that we have in this expression. We have a 24, we have a minus 9, we have a minus 15. And despite the fact that I don't have my calculator today, I happen to know that 24 minus 9 minus 15, those are going to cancel out. We're going to get zero. News. We'll even mark it. That's good news. Now that we have some stuff canceling out, let's see what else we can do here. We have some like terms that we're going to go ahead and combine. This will be 0 0.03 times... See, 8 delta x minus 6 delta x is going to be 2 delta x minus the delta x squared. And this is all still over delta x. Wow, numerator shrank a little bit. I guess I don't need one that is, uh, well, I don't need a fraction bar that's quite that long anymore. Now, we already stated that we can't plug in delta x equals 0, but we can let it get as close as we dare let it get. However, I'm also going to notice that in my numerator my two terms have a delta x in common. 2 minus, so we'll have a 2 minus delta x left over and a delta x in the denominator. Again, this is really good news because now we have a factor of delta x in the numerator and a factor of delta x in the denominator. And we'll point out one more time, delta x is this time, we won't do it ironically. We actually will write it very small. So my rate of change is going to depend on how big delta x is. The trick is to let delta x be as close to zero as possible. So we'll point out that as delta x gets... Here, we're going to do it again. This thing is going to start looking like... 0 0.03 times 2 minus small. Now if we let that thing get as small as possible, when we say as small as possible, 2 minus something really small is like saying 2 minus 0. When we multiply the 0 0.03 times 2, 
we're going to get about 0 0.06. That is about as well as we can estimate what the rate of change of the elevation was at that point. Now the units on it, we take the units of f of x, which were miles, over the units of x. So what we're talking about is miles per mile. Now technically those units cancel out, but let's uh, keep in mind the context of the problem. It was uh, vertical miles per horizontal mile, so it still does represent a slope. We'll point out that that was vertical over horizontal. So it still definitely represents a slope. Well, I hope this was as much fun for you to watch as it was for me to do. So keep enjoying your MLK day, and I'll see you soon with more hits.